Hi children, welcome to EduCup. Today we are with the third part of 15th lesson in grade 7 science. Topic is soil. So we are going to talk about soil water. True, we think that soil is dry. There is water in it. Here you have to do an activity to identify that soil contain water. You will need a sample of dry soil, test tube, a Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp. First of all, you have to put sample of soil into the test tube and heat it. Write down your observation. Identify whether the liquid droplets deposit on the walls of the test tube are water. Here you can identify liquid droplets formed inside the test tube. That is the observation in this practical. Whether how we can identify that liquid droplets form inside the test tube are water. A blue color chemical called copper sulfate is presented in the laboratory. When it is heated, it turns to white. White color copper sulfate is called anhydrous copper sulfate. When water is added to the anhydrous copper sulfate, it turns again into blue color. So we can get a conclusion that liquid droplets form inside the test tube is water. Let's see functions of soil water. First one, helps soil organisms to maintain their functions. Second one, helps plant to absorb nutrients from soil. Third one, controls the temperature of soil fourth one as a raw material for the photosynthesis of plants next topic is soil organisms here we have to do activity to identify organisms in soil you will need several soil samples taken from under tree flower bed and under large stone and you will need sheet of white paper also First of all, you have to spread each soil sample on the sheet of white paper. After that, you can observe soil organisms using hand lens and after that, you have to draw them. Here, I have given you some diagrams which you can observe, the animals which you can observe using that uh, soil samples. And lockets, centipede, millipedes are the examples. But some organisms who are not visible to our naked eye also may be present in soil. They are called soil microorganisms. Here you have to observe whether microorganisms are present in the soil or not. You will need to test tubes, milk, cotton and soil sample. Let's see what we have to do. First of all, sterilize two test tubes in boiling water. Here, microorganisms in them will be destroyed. Put equal amounts of boiled milk into the test tubes and let them cool. Take a soil sample and divide them into two equal portions. Take one sample and heat it for about 5 minutes keeping on the metal plate. Add heated soil sample to one test tube with milk and add the non-heated soil sample into the other test tube. Fix cotton stoppers to both test tubes. Both test tubes will gain air but microorganisms cannot enter them. Observe the tube hourly. Record your observations. Observation will be milk in the test tube with unheated soil will coagulate it faster than the other one. Conclusion is coagulation of milk is a microbial activity. Milk in the test tube with heated soil will coagulate it slowly. When cotton stoppers are fixed to the test tubes, air enters but not microorganisms. The above experiment shows that microorganisms are presented in the soil. Here you can see different organisms who lived in soil. Flatworm, and centipede, beetle, earthworms, 
are some examples. Let's see functions of soil organisms. First one, when earthworm dig holes, soil gets loosened and get air. Third one, microorganisms like bacteria decay plants and dead bodies so that minerals get into soil. Next topic is soil profile. A vertical section of the different layers of soil from the earth crust is called soil profile. It spread from top layer to the brick rock. There are mainly three layers that can be identified in the soil profile. Here you can see a soil profile. Topsoil, subsoil, brick rock is there. When moving from top to bottom in the soil profile, the size of the particles will gradually increase. The bottom of the profile is bedrock. Subsoil is formed by weathering of bedrock and forming small particles. The topsoil is formed by further weathering of particles in the subsoil. Roots of the most plants are spread in the topsoil, but roots of some large plants can be penetrated into the subsoil layer. The soil profile is very important in studying about soil. Here you can see the soil profile. Here you have to make a model of a soil profile. You will need set of soil sieves, cardboard, soil and glue. Let's see what we have to do. Dig a hole of 30 cm deep in your home garden and collect soil sample from it. Separate the soil sample by using a set of sleeves. Get a piece of cardboard and separate it into three areas drawn to horizontal line. Place the soil particles remaining in the second sleeve from top bottom on the lowest region on the cardboard. Then place the soil particle remaining in the second sieve from top on the lower area. Place the soil particles in third sieve from the top. Place the sieve soil particles from all sieves in topmost area. Here you have created a model of soil profile. 